Over the course of the past two years, I have become obsessed with the games made by the writer and director Kotaro Uchikoshi. I first started with the Zero Escape series back in spring 2021, playing the first game on a complete whim, and made my way from there. I've now played every single one of his games that's available to play in English, and I've even amassed a bit of a collection of sorts. It's an understatement to say that I'm a big fan of his work, and I have always desired to go in depth with everything that I've experienced, as well as share my thoughts with others. Thus, this project was born. This series of videos will be a comprehensive history and retrospective of the career and works of this one developer. As I like to call it, a docuspective. It is a project that has been in the making for quite a long time, and will most certainly be a long process. But without further ado, I would like to present the prologue of this saga. A brief history. Kotaro Uchikoshi is a Japanese writer and game developer born in the year 1973. Best known for his work on the Zero Escape and I, the Somnium Files series, he has a unique style of writing in which he starts with an end twist and works backwards. He tends to create adventure visual novel games with surprising story beats and sci-fi premises that set everything up. Over the years, his style has been incredibly refined and changed to adapt to what the current market of players and fans are looking for. However, to get to that, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. Uchikoshi's career started in 1998, creating wireframe models for the now well-known action and licensed game Pepsi Man. Fully joining the company that developed the game, he worked at Kindle Imagine Develop, otherwise known as KID. He helped write the first two games in the Memories Off series, which I will not be covering, as they have not yet been translated into English, officially or by fans. However, another set of visual novels that he helped spearhead along with Takumi Nakazawa, that being the Infinity series, has been released in English and those will be explored. The Infinity series is a trilogy of games, those being Never 7, The End of Infinity, Ever 17, The Out of Infinity, and Remember 11, The Age of Infinity. These games incorporate aspects of dating simulator visual novels with science fiction twists, often recontextualizing many parts of the game. The science fiction aspects of these games were praised highly by critics, despite the directors intending to have less of a focus on these facets. As the series went on, we saw a growing trend in how essential these sci-fi parts of the game were to the overall story. There was also a spin-off of the Infinity series known as Twelve Riven, the Psy-Criminal of Integral, and the first and only game in the Integral series, released in 2008, even though Kid filed for bankruptcy in 2006. Twelve Riven is also a game that will not be covered, as it has yet to be translated into English, along with Eve New Generation, a standalone game released by Kid in 2006 that Ushikoshi also wrote for. These games have been played on stream by fantastic translator G Ace, who live translated into English as he played. However, I prefer to play games for myself, so I haven't personally watched very much of these streams. But where is Kindle Imagine Develop today? Well, after they declared bankruptcy in 2006, their intellectual property rights were acquired by Cyberfront, a decently sized publishing company which would create the PSP versions of the Infinity series. As luck would have it, Cyberfront shut down in 2013 and was bought by Kaga Create, a company that created a few small PC titles in Japan. This company did not do anything with the IPs they acquired, so they're often a forgotten part of this story. They would go on to shut down in 2015, and all of their assets were obtained by 5PB, now renamed to Mages. This is the current owner of the Infinity series IP, and they're known for series such as Steinsgate and Famicom Detective Club. 
For an anniversary event, the soundtracks of the Infinity series were put on streaming services like Spotify in high quality. That's great, but a lot of fans have been hoping for ports, remasters, or remakes of these classic titles. This seemingly impossible hope would be answered on February 27th, 2023, when the director of the Mages Company would announce that the Infinity series would be receiving remakes. We have yet to have a follow-up on this announcement, but if this does happen, it would bring new fans to the series who have been unable to play these games prior. However, this story is not about Cyberfront or Mages, as Uchikoshi would not go on to continue game development at these corporations. In 2006, Uchikoshi worked on an adaptation of the SNES visual novel Banshee's Last Cry by a little company called Chunsoft, being an email correspondence spin-off which introduced him to the company, and later in 2007, he received an invitation to work there. He accepted, and was originally planning to work on the live-action visual novel 428 Shibuya Scramble, but unfortunately he joined too late for that to pass. Instead, he set out to create his own game. What he ended up creating was the critically acclaimed 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors, otherwise known as 999, for the Nintendo DS in 2009. That's a lot of nines. Despite being well received, the game did not sell as many copies as it has been hoped, especially in Japan. Uchikoshi took consumer criticisms into account, as well as direct orders from higher-ups at Chunsoft, now renamed Spike Chunsoft, when creating the sequel, Virtue's Last Reward, in 2012. This game named the series as the Zero Escape franchise. Despite VLR having better reception than 999, and even selling a bit more, the Zero Escape series would be officially cancelled by Spike Chunsoft, even though a third game was planned. However, due to fan outcry, the third and final game, Zero Time Dilemma, was released in 2016, receiving decent but mixed reviews from fans, citing how the game had to be rushed and how much was cut from the story. One year later, in 2017, a re-release of 999 and VLR was created for modern consoles. 999 featured many changes, some for the good and some for the bad. Because of how different this version is, I will be briefly talking about the 999 remaster, but not VLR's port as it's essentially the exact same game. Going back to 2016, Uchikoshi also worked on Punchline, a visual novel based on the anime of the same name, which he also wrote for. And, in fact, the game was developed by Mages, the company which owns the Infinity series. The game received somewhat negative feedback, as it had a lot of elements that made people uncomfortable. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And an altered ending that was not as satisfying as the ending to the show. Four years later, in 2020, the game Worlds and Club was released by 2Kyo Games, a new company made by former Spike Chunsoft employees. Being co-directed by Uchikoshi and Kazutaka Kodaka, the writer of the Danganronpa series, with help from Chunsoft as well. Worlds and Club is a 2D platformer with visual novel-esque storytelling with an emphasis on a younger cast, being children just 12 years old. It received decent reviews, but nothing on the level of Uchikoshi's previous works. Speaking of previous works, just one year before World's End Club, in 2019, Spike Chunsoft, in collaboration with Uchikoshi, hosted an ARG, an alternate reality game, in which we gather clues online and solve them in order to discover something. The development of the then-upcoming I, the Somnium Files, another mystery adventure game which Uchikoshi was directing and writing, just as he had with the Zero Escape series. 
the game released to stellar reviews, citing its characters and emotional backbone as its strongest suits. Yeah, I'm thinking. In 2021, a sequel subtitled Nirvana Initiative was unveiled with a 2022 release date. Fan speculation ran rampant for the next year, until more trailers released and another ARG had just begun one month before the release of the game. It was released in June of 2022 to very positive reviews from critics, but many fans ended up having mixed feelings about the game. The possibility of a third eye game has been teased, as well as the possibility of story DLC for Nirvana Initiative. But who truly knows what will happen? And so, that brings us to the present. Now that the history of Kotaro Uchikoshi's development has been briefly covered, each of his games will be explored individually and thoroughly in future videos. Please keep in mind that I will be only covering games of which there is access to play in English. These games are as follows. Pepsi Man, Never 7, Ever 17, Remember 11, 999, Virtue's Last Reward, Zero Time Dilemma, Punchline, I the Somnium Files, its sequel Nirvana Initiative, and World's End Club. These games will be thoroughly explored in order by their release date, save for a few so that each series can be discussed together. Each game's portion will be divided into three sections, Preview, Overview, and Review. In the preview, I will cover the game's development and history. In the overview, a simple summary of the game's plot and mechanics. The review will contain my own personal thoughts and opinions about each game, and will be divided into three subsections, presentation, gameplay, and story. In the presentation portion, I'll talk about the art direction, music, and design choices. Gameplay should be self-explanatory, where I talk about the game mechanics and what I thought of them. Finally, and this will be the longest section by far, is the story. The story section will be a detailed summary of the events of the story, with my own commentary and thoughts alongside them. Please note that each game's section will contain spoilers for that game and any in that series that may have come before it. For example, there will be 999 spoilers when talking about its sequel, Virtue's Last Reward, but not when talking about I the Somnium Files, which is a completely separate series. Despite this though, if spoilers don't bother you, or if you don't intend to play the games, feel more than free to watch any of these videos, as everything will be fully explained to where you should be able to understand everything, even if you haven't played any of these games. I aim to be as in-depth as I possibly can, and justify and explain all of my personal opinions. I hope you'll join me as we dive into the Uchikoshi Initiative. So that was the first episode of this docuspective. It's a large undertaking, but I'm looking forward to preserving these amazing stories and my own personal beliefs along with them. The first game I'll be taking a look at is Pepsi Man. If you'd like to stick around for this series, please consider subscribing. I've been Nikua, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>